Hello and welcome you all to an interesting session on what's, why's and how's of clinical genetic testing. This session is intended to give you a primer on clinical genetic testing and also to discuss key points and considerations to be kept in mind before you recommend genetic testing for clinical diagnosis. So let's get started. Now. I'm sure you all must already be knowing about different kind of genetic tests. Broadly, they can be divided into two categories, medical users and non-medical users. When we talk about medical users, the first kind of test that comes to mind is diagnostic testing. In this kind of genetic testing, we either confirm or rule out a particular genetic disorder. Now, once we have identified the genetic defect in diagnostic testing, we can use this information to go ahead for carrier testing. Now, carriers are individuals who may be who may not be showing symptoms at present but carry the genetic defect prenatal diagnosis is done in fetal stage to look for congenital abnormalities and birth defects newborn screening is done on newborns in which a battery of uh, monogenic mendelian disorders such as inborn errors of metabolism can be tested in case of predictive diagnosis the risk of developing a particular disorder throughout lifetime is estimated, uh, such as risk of developing uh, breast cancer. Uh, in case of pre-implantation testing, uh, it is done during the in vitro fertilization procedure where embryos are tested for chromosomal anomalies and other anomalies before being implanted in the uterus. Lastly, in pharmacogenetic testing, the genetic determinants of response to certain drugs can be tested. In case of non-medical users, paternity testing is done to find out if the members of a family are biologically related to each other. Uh, genealogy testing determines the lineage or ancestry of an individual and the forensic testing is more commonly known to identify the individual for legal purpose. Now talking about the clinical genetic testing, one obvious question to ask is when should one actually go for genetic testing? First and foremost is the family history of disease. Uh, so when a patient presents to a clinic and clinicians ask for the family history and maps the family members on a pedigree, then he or she might suspect the genetic pattern of disease in the family, meaning multiple affected members uh, of the family across generation. This is indicative of a genetic disorder and such cases should definitely be considered for clinical genetic testing. The other scenarios are rare or undiagnosed disorders. When a patient is critically ill and the diagnosis is very broad, then one can consider taking a genetic test. Now, there are numerous examples in the literature where genetic diagnosis has actually made a significant difference in the clinical intervention or management of the disease. Also, once the diagnosis is made, it can be used for carrier screening and planning for the next child. Interestingly, the benefits of diagnosis is not only limited to an individual or uh, to a family, but can be extrapolated to an entire community. For example, if there are multiple families in the same community carrying, uh, showing the same uh, phenotypes, and which is not a very uncommon case in India, then the genetic defect identified in one family can then be made into a simple diagnostic assay uh, that can be used to screen the entire community. Before going deeper in diagnostic testing, let us first understand the difference between carrier screening and diagnostic testing. Screening tests are intended for people or population in general who do not show any signs or symptoms of disease. Whereas in case of diagnostic testing, uh, the testing is done on actually for people who show the signs and symptoms of disease. Now, there are a number of advantages that screening tests uh, provide, such as it helps to detect diseases earlier and provide a kind of surveillance. It also helps to reduce the risk of disease and, indi and indicate if the diagnostic testing is required for any individual. Now, take, take an example of a complete blood cell count test. By looking at the report, one gets to know that if the blood cell counts are normal, if there are abnormal counts for any particular blood uh, blood type uh, blood cell type then one may need to go for a specific diagnostic test so basically cbc test act as a screening test to check the overall health whether it is a screening test or a diagnostic test, one thing that remains common uh, or constant in both is the concept of informed consent. As the name suggests, it refers to the information that the person taking a genetic test should know about and then only voluntarily gives a consent to participate in the genetic testing. 
Uh, now, this information includes the description and purpose of the test, how will the test be carried out, how to interpret the results of the test, and will there be confidentiality maintained, uh, what are the benefits and limitations of the test, are there uh, any physical or emotional risk associated with it, uh, and if the results or samples uh, would be used for research purpose in future, and whether testing may provide information for other family members also. Now, the good thing here is uh, that unlike any contract, uh, the person can change his or her mind even after uh, giving the informed consent and can choose to withdraw his or her sample from the genetic testing study. After taking the consent, the samples for genetic testing are collected. Uh, the method of sample collection depends on the type of genetic testing being done. For example, the simplest of all is the cheek swab. So, DNA is a DNA. So, no matter which cells you are uh, taking to extract out the DNA, it will, it will remain the same. So, once the cheek swab is taken, the DNA is isolated and genetic testing is performed on it. Other kind of samples that are routinely taken are blood and saliva. In case of newborns, a heel prick can allow us to uh, test the monogenic Mendelian disorders. In case of prenatal testing, amniocentosis is done in which uh, amniotic fluid surrounding the fetus is taken using a needle uh, piercing through the abdominal wall of mother. CVS sample that is chorionic uh, villus sampling is little tricky. It is also used for prenatal testing. In this procedure, a small tissue from placenta is taken for testing. Uh, it is taken either uh, with a tube known as catheter through the cervix or through abdominal wall and uterus using a thin needle. There is a range of genetic tests that are available as shown in the uh, figure here. In case of Sanger sequencing, one can look for genetic defects in a specific region of uh, less than 1 KB region of a genome. It is very accurate and considered as a gold standard for validating NGS data. Uh, next comes the targeted NGS panel in which one can test multiple genes at once. Uh, now, a panel can have uh, as few as four genes in case of familial hypercholesterolemia and as high, uh, as high as over 1000 genes as in the case of intellectual disability conditions. Now, going ahead, we have whole exome sequencing test uh, uh, which actually tests the coding exons of all the 22,000 genes present in the genome. Now, it has been seen that that when a uh, whole exome sequencing is used uh, for diagnosis, when targeted NGS has already been done, uh, the rate of diagnosis can be increased by 16%. Now, cost-wise, nowadays, uh, uh, WES or whole exome sequencing is coming very close to targeted NGS panels. Uh, next is whole genome sequencing, which is the untargeted approach uh, of sequencing. Even the uh, it can sequence even the intergenic, uh, intronic, and regulatory portions of the genome, and the resolution is as high as one uh, base pair in this case. Uh, the last is the genotyping test in which one can check over uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, SNPs using a single chip. Chromosomal tests are used to detect chromosomal anomalies such as loss or gain of an entire chromosome or even deletions and duplications in some parts of the chromosomes. So classically karyotyping uh, was used to detect these kind of anomalies but it has a very low resolution uh, meaning you cannot detect deletions or duplications that are subchromosomal or of less than 5 MB in length. So now we have a mic uh, we have uh, microarray based methods such as array comparative genomic hybridization and SNP uh, microarray which can detect genome wide copy number variations such as del deletions or duplications etc at a much better resolution than karyotyping Again, NGS-based techniques can also be used for this purpose. Uh, FISH and MLPA are the techniques which provide a very high resolution than karyotyping but can be efficiently used when the anomalies are already known. Till now, we have understood the range of genetic tests that can be performed. The challenge is now to choose up an appropriate genetic test. There are some points that one needs to ponder upon before choosing a suitable genetic test. First is the diagnosis, whether the diagnosis is narrow or broad and whether it is certain or uncertain. Second is the type of disease for which uh, genetic testing is sought. Uh, next is the type of variation, whether you want to test uh, uh, single nucleotide variations that is SNVs, chromosomal anomalies, copy number variations or repeat expansions. Uh, 
नेक्स्ट इफ देर इज अ स्पेसिफिक वेरिएशन इन अ पर्टिकुलर जीन और इफ द वेरिएशन कैन बी एनी वेयर इन अ पर्टिकुलर जीन और इफ द वेरिएशन कैन बी एनी वेयर इन एनी जीन एक्सप्लेनिंग द डिजीज सो लेट्स डिस्कस हाउ टू चूज अ जेनेटिक टेस्ट बेस्ड अपॉन ईच ऑफ दीज फैक्टर्स the first factor is diagnosis i want to over emphasize the point here that the chances of a successful genetic test is directly proportional to the specificity of provisional diagnosis and clinical details that are provided by the clinicians now it is important to understand that a genetic test cannot be done in isolation but it is a complementary approach along with regular diagnosis process now therefore it needs a good amount of inputs and involvement from clinicians uh, test results can only be interpreted when patient's other records are in place here we are talking about genetic test results and the patient records include physical examination that involves distinctive physical characteristics and imaging test Uh, medical history that uh, that includes past illnesses hospitalizations surgeries medications laboratory test reports that can aid in diagnosis uh, fam family medical history in which medical issues with parents siblings children and distant relatives uh, are included that can indicate an inheritance pattern of the disease and the last is uh, other laboratory test that includes regular blood urine and other biochemical test that can actually play a crucial uh, role in provisional diagnosis so all of this taken together are very important uh, in order to reach to a correct diagnosis based on diagnosis let's see how one should decide the type of test now one should really look at the provisional uh, diagnostic accuracy if the diagnostic accuracy is high which is usually there in case of easily identifiable phenotypes then one can directly go for targeted ngs or chromosomal screening test uh, depending on the phenotype that one wants to test for uh, and in 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 this case if uh, genetic diagnosis is made then it's good and if genetic diagnosis is not made then one can uh, go to the uh, wes and wgs based uh, testing now in other case if diagnostic accuracy is low uh, which is there in case where uh, phenotypes are complex uh, and diagnosis can be only made as a broad kind of uh, diagnosis then one one can directly go for wes and wgs based uh, testing uh, in this case also if genetic diagnosis is made it's good and if not uh, then we will discuss the reasons why uh, or in what cases even wes and wgs cannot uh, solve the problems next factor is the disease in question after the diagnosis has been made one should clearly try to understand the disease uh, whether the cause of the disease is genetic or mostly environmental now genetic diseases tend to be more uh, familial and uh, they involve mendelian genetics are mostly monogenic or oleg oligogenic in some cases they can be polygenic also uh, but mostly they are rare diseases and the causes can be single nucleotide variations copy number variations repeat expansions and chromosomal anomalies whereas in case of environmental uh, uh, disorders they can be they are mostly sporadic they involve complex genetics are polygenic in nature and are mostly fairly uh, common in the population the causes can include alcohol smoking diet sleep uh, hormone socio economic factors and other lifestyle habits now this slide shows the examples of genetic and the environmental diseases uh, in the extreme ends of the spectrum uh, one can see the classical examples uh, of each case for example sickle cell anemia down syndrome and hemophilia in the genetic side of the spectrum and goiter uh, lead poisoning and emphysema in the environmental side of the spectrum now diabetes has both the components to it and therefore has been placed exactly in the middle uh, similarly cardiac channelopathies and uh, intellectual disability conditions can also be caused due to genetic defects and the environmental effects and therefore has been uh, have been placed uh, near the middle now in order to uh, uh, in order to decide which test to order getting to know the disease in question is very important now once you understand the type of disease uh, you can use this approach for choosing the appropriate genetic test uh, in case of single gene disorder for example sickle cell anemia and cystic fibrosis where you know that you have to test only one gene then sanger sequencing can be the uh, best choice uh, 
In case of oligogenic disorder, for example, uh, cardiac and channelopathies, where you know that you have to test at least uh, 35, 30 to 35 genes uh, to, get to, the, uh, to get to the diagnosis, then targeted gene panel will be uh, the better choice. Uh, in cases of disorders for which genes are unknown or there is a missing heritability, for example, global developmental de delay, where new genes are uh, be still being uh, adding up, then WES and WGS will be the best choice. Now, if you can observe here, there is a tiered sort of approach. For example, if, if in, in case of Sanger sequencing, you, you don't get the diagnosis, then one can go to the uh, targeted gene panel. If it happens with the targeted gene panel also that you are not getting the genetic diagnosis, then you can uh, go to the WES or WGS based approaches. Through prior knowledge, if you already know that uh, single nucleotide variations or SNVs are majorly responsible for the disease in question, uh, then you can follow, uh, follow this approach of testing only SNVs. Uh, if an SNV is already known to be segregating in family and you want to test the same SNV in uh, some other extended family members, then you can go for the targeted uh, Sanger sequencing. Um, and if you know that the SNV uh, lies in a single gene, then again Sanger sequencing can be the uh, best choice for, of, uh, the, of testing. Uh, if you know that SNVs can lie in multiple genes and uh, now multiple genes uh, need to be tested, then targeted gene panel can be the best uh, choice. If the problem is not solved by any of these uh, two uh, techniques, by Sanger or uh, targeted gene panel, then one can again go for uh, WES and WGS based uh, genetic testing. In case of copy number variations, if a CNV is known in the patient and screening of suspected carriers is required, then MLPA can be the uh, b best choice of test. But if the CNV is unknown and you want to check where all the CNVs are present in the entire genome, then array CGH and SNP uh, microarray can be uh, used. If the genetic diagnosis is made using these techniques, uh, then it's good. If not, then one can again go to uh, WES and WGS based genetic testing. In case of chromosomal anomalies, if the diagnosis is strong based on signs and symptoms of the patient, then when one can directly go for MLPA. If the diagnosis is weak, then more broader techniques uh, like karyotyping or array CGH can be used. Uh, now, if in, uh, using these the techniques also, the diagnosis is not being made, then uh, one can try going for uh, WES and WGS based approaches. Repeat expansions are one of the trickiest uh, genetic defects for diagnosis. Uh, in case if the repeat expansion is known and uh, they are small in length, uh, for example, in case of Huntington's disease, then PCR-based methods uh, can accurately tell the number of repeats that are there. But if the repeat expansions are unknown and large, for example, in case of Fragile X syndrome, then one can directly go for uh, WS and WGS-based approaches. Uh, but here is a caution. Even with these uh, uh, NGS-based approaches, newer computational tools are still coming up that can accurately uh, define and tell the number of repeats uh, involved in these kind of disorders. Now, once you have chosen the genetic test and uh, done the genetic test of choice, it is important to interpret the results of a genetic test. For example, what does a positive uh, genetic test result mean? It means that a change known to affect health or development in the gene or chromosome has been found. Uh, this can indicate uh, the confirmation of a diagnosis that a person is a carrier of a particular genetic variant and there can be an increased risk of developing a disease or there is a need for further testing. Also, it has implications for certain blood relatives of the person that, uh, that for which testing has been performed. Now, it is also important to know that what a positive genetic test result cannot establish. It cannot tell the exact risk of developing a disorder of a predictive or a pre-symptomatic genetic test. Also, it cannot tell the course or severity of the condition throughout the lifetime. But on a brighter side, a positive uh, result can direct a person toward available prevention, monitoring and treatment options. On the other hand, a negative genetic test uh, result means that a change known to affect health or development in the gene or chromosome has not been found. So basically, it indicates that a person is not affected by a particular disorder or is not a carrier of a specific genetic variant or does not have an increased risk of developing a certain disease. 
but one has to be very cautious uh, while interpreting the negative genetic test result because of the following reasons number one accuracy of the test matters that means the test that you have ordered can miss a disease causing genetic alteration because many tests cannot detect all genetic changes that can cause a particular disorder for example the test that you you, you have ordered only detects snvs and you would and you have grandly missed the cnv so therefore accuracy is what is important Important. and in those cases further testing or retesting may be required to confirm a negative result second is the false negatives it occurs when the results indicate a decreased risk or a genetic condition uh, when a uh, when the person is actually affected so basically when your symptoms are telling you that you are affected uh, you have to carefully uh, consider that and the testing has to be again repeated in this case third the negative uh, result does not indicate protection from disease for lifetime. For example, the majority of people who develop breast cancer don't have a, a breast cancer gene, but they can have other predisposing uh, genetic factors. So, on a brighter side, a negative result can eliminate the need for uh, unnecessary checkups and screening tests in some cases. There is a third category of genetic test results that is known as the inconclusive genetic test. In cases when a genetic test does not give any useful information, we call it as an inconclusive genetic test. Now, uh, it occurs if a genetic test finds a change in DNA that has not been confirmed to play a role in development of disease and uh, we call these changes as variants of uncertain significance. Due to lack of scientific evidence, it is not possible to confirm or refute a disease association. And an uninformative result also cannot confirm or rule out a specific diagnosis. And we cannot uh, say whether the person has increased risk of developing a disorder or decreased risk of developing a disorder. But in some cases, testing other affected and unaffected family members can really help to clarify this kind of a result. Uh, but most important point here is that follow-up testing or periodic reviews of the scientific evidence is very necessary to actually reclassify these uncertain uh, variants into either the benign or the pathogenic variant category. In all of the flowcharts that we previously discussed uh, for doing the genetic diagnosis, we ended up saying that if the diagnosis is not made by using some XYZ technique, then we can directly go to WS and WGS based genetic test. Now, it is very important to understand that even WS and WGS based genetic test cannot solve 100% of the problems. Now, genomic data is being considered as a strong pillar of precision medicine uh, and exome and genome uh, sequences are like Long clinical resource and very important knowledge basis in terms of discovering incidental findings and novel variations. Therefore, doing uh, WS and WGS is important. But genomics is an ever evolving field, and a clinical sequencing report is usually prepared with the best evidence available at that point of time. The unexplained cases, uh, even with the WS and WGS based test, suggest that there are new genetic disorders that we are missing that are yet to be discovered and characterized or there can be gene-gene interactions that are uh, causing the phenotypes or there, there is epistasis behind them or there can be some variations that remain uncaptured for example some copy number variations or because uh, the region of the genome uh, was difficult for sequencing and there also there can be some environmental con contributions that are leading to the phenotype. So it's important to understand that while WS and WGS based testing is important, it cannot solve problem 100% of the time. Now, I want to briefly touch upon the difference between the genetic testing in a research setting versus genetic testing in a clinical setting. The goals of both of these uh, testings are very different. For example, in a research-based testing, we are not only interested in knowing the diagnosis of a, uh, of a patient or a particular family, but also we are interested in finding the unknown genes or variations and to learn how genes work. This can help the advancement of the understanding of genetic conditions in a better way and the information that we gain, the insights that we gain by, you, by doing the research-based genetic testing is also used to develop tests for future clinical use. Because of the exhaustive workup and procedures, the time that is taken for research-based testing is uh, very significant that can usually uh, last in months up to years. 
on the other hand in the clinical uh, based testing we we are interested to find out about an inherited disorder in an individual patient or a family and therefore uh, the time that is taken here is less which usually ends up in weeks up to a month the consent process remains same for both kind of genetic testing and the utility is also similar uh, that both of them help to make decisions about medical care or reproductive issues throughout the presentation we have been discussing about the benefits and uses of genetic testing but it is important to emphasize here that genetic testing is not free of risks and limitations a few of the risk and limitations i have listed here uh, sampling in in general is very uh, risk free process but in some cases like from from chorionic villus can be a little risky and uh, there are consequences of genetic testing which comes in the form of emotional social or uh, financial and that can be significant which can create tensions in families uh, for some people genetic discrimination in employment can be uh, very concerning and uh, even if you get a positive genetic test result you uh, cannot get uh, the complete information about the severity and the progression of the disease in your uh, entire lifetime uh, last but probably the most important is about the treatment strategies while uh, while we can test n number of diseases using different genetic techniques still we have to keep in mind that uh, treatment strategies are not in place for uh, many of the disorders these are the references that were really helpful in preparation of the session i hope this talk will help you to understand genetic testing in a better way if you want a descriptive uh, explanation on any of the topics discussed here please do write to us we will try to make a complete session on that topic too thank you all for paying the attention